Yeah. The, I, I had, like, the dumbest thought the other night that I was, like, a sitcom about people who don't know each other and never meet. <laughs> Welcome to No One Can Know About This, a podcast where we play every Final Fantasy. I'm Jeff Ekman. And I'm Ryan Kazmiski. And here we go, episode 19. Episode 19. I can't believe we're <laughs> this far into a season. Where we left off, we made it to Zozo, we're following a bird. Mm-hmm. I think we're on our way to finally find Cyan. Yeah, I remember this being confusing to me, because I was like, oh, we're following the bird, we must be on our way to find Locke. Right. But that's the opposite, there's, that's there's not some what's bird happening. misdirection in this game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we wound up unrusting a rusted door at the top of a tower in Zozo. Yeah, which is going to lead to the next dungeon. But first, <laughs> at some point between our last play session that we ended last episode with and what we're about to embark, we got together because the clotted cream was ready. Right. So where this episode begins is an in-between time where Ryan came over to try some clotted cream. Yeah, I just came over for like 20 minutes to eat clotted cream and then I left. <laughs> So let's go. Let's get into this amazing episode. So this morning I took the clotted cream casserole dish out of the fridge. When it was still warm, it was just like still liquid. Well, I took the skin off of it while it was still warm, and then yeah, it was still liquid, and there was also some clearly just like liquid fat on top mm. of just like golden oil. Yeah, that stuff must congeal. Uh huh. Well, it's not just that because. Then, this morning, when I went to scrape it up, there was, like, a layer of straight-up butter above a layer of, of cream. Mm -hmm. So, it really was kind of awesome. Like, I showed you that picture of, like, the way it just kind of scrapes up. And now I got this beautiful bowl full of clotted cream. I mean, it looks pretty good. It looks like an amazing bowl of ice cream. Yeah, I don't think it's that's yeah, but that's sort of what ice cream is. You just add sugar to heavy cream and make cold. I have a blueberry scone and like an oat scone. And I'm gonna just just take some butter and pop it on. It's fucking amazing. Oh my god. Where is this shit? Well, like we said, it's like you have to consume all of it right away. We, we should. We should consume all of it right away. Oh my god. That lived up to my memory better than I expected. I haven't had it in like 10, 10 years. Whoa, yeah. 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 It's not butter. It's very close, but it's like so much. It, it's for the scone. It's for the scone. <laughs> it it works, works with the scone. It's like scone butter. That's it's like the exactly. only thing I can imagine. Like you wouldn't put this on toast. No. You wouldn't you no. wouldn't you wouldn't use this in place of butter in any situation. You wouldn't like cook with this, no. <laughs> it came out better than I expected. Wow. Yeah, that's really good. <laughs> that made in a giant bowl full of clotted cream. Yeah. You can make clotted cream every day. You put it in the oven the night before or the day before or whatever. Let it cool overnight. You can have fresh clotted like how expensive is it to have a bowl full of clotted cream every day? Well, Ten bucks. more expensive than having butter. D uh, yeah, all right. That's true. That's the thing. That is so rich. <laughs> but it's like straight up better for scones than anything else, right? Mm-hmm. Cream clots. Yeah, so the coffee shop is coffee, olives, scones, and clotted cream. Nailing it. This is, the olive element is my favorite part of it. Well, it's like if you go there in the morning, you get a scone and clotted cream. And if you go there after like 11, you get <laughs> A bunch of olives and some coffee. <laughs> I mean, I'm not a maniac. I'm not going to eat olives too early in the morning. When were you eating them <laughs> earlier? Like though? 11. It was like, yeah, it was at 11. <laughs> so yeah, that was the culmination of 19 episodes of work to get to clotted cream. The only tangible culmination, that's for sure. Right. At that point. But I wanted to talk to you because you were texting me the whole rest of the day going like, I can never eat clotted cream again. I felt really sick. <laughs> For, I had to go to work after this, and I got there, and let be, probably about 20 minutes later, I was like, oh, man, 
on. That it's, was like too much clotted cream. <laughs> right. I mean, it, I didn't even eat that much of it either. Yeah, you're right. I it didn't wasn't even a eat crazy an entire amount. scone. It I was had like <laughs> several bites with clotted cream on it, you know. And and I, at the end, I was like, that is the richest thing I've ever eaten. Yeah, I didn't feel mm. bad afterward, but I did have it a couple more times. And like, there was a point at which I was like, God, you just can't have this regularly. But if you want to have it regularly, <laughs> all you got to do is leave some cream in the oven for 12 Un- hours. Pastor- not ultra pasteurized. Not ultra pasteurized. Anyway, so a while later, maybe even a week later. I think it was after a weekend. Okay, so a, l- a few days later, we get back together and we sit down in front of the TV screen that's on, but we haven't turned the machine on. And here we go. So should we talk about this game? Sure. F- where we were left what, off? What? Where did we leave off? Because I remember. Yeah. We finally got the rust away for the door that's in poor town. Up oh, at the top right, of right. The we're going to go up to the, the mountain. Right. Mount Zuzu or whatever. Mm-hmm. Which is through a door at the top of a tower. Is a mountain? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <you're right. laughs> it's literally a rusted shut door that is at, on like a floor to 12. A that's good. And it's not like this building is up against a hill. No, no. Like, it's there's like in the another building of a city. behind it. <laughs> <laughs> How are we going to go there? Did you make, make it through the rest of that clotted cream? <laughs> no, I still got a big bowl of it. I didn't. I didn't have another scone to put it on. What am I gonna put it on? Bread? No. No. I'm not sure it's even good to eat anymore. I doubt it. <laughs> I think it's been too long. I already. probably <laughs> have. I mean, I can always make more. Yeah, I later that I felt so fucking sick later that day. I was like, <laughs> oh man, my brother. So first of all, because he he wants to get a gym membership, and I kind of do too, but we were eating at Blaze Pizza at the Galleria, and it was like at 8.30 at night. So for the first time ever, that like Gold's gym across from it was like open. Like that wall okay. opens up, and it's like a gym, and there were tons of people going in and out, and he was okay. like, we should get a gym membership at the mall. And I was like, that's an amazing <laughs> It's like if I could come to the mall, if the mall became like a part of my life in that way, that'd be so weird. Um, he was like, yeah, I was thinking about it. He was like, I don't think we can afford like a gym membership. He's like, well, we might be able to get a joint membership, which is usually for like married couples, but no one can has to know that we're not married. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh my god, you're right. <laughs> so you're sharing a gym membership? Well, well, we haven't yet, but just the idea that I was like, I was like, yeah, because twins can pretend to be the other one. You and I can pretend to be married. <laughs> We're brothers, but... <laughs> but we, can pretend, we have the same last name. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> I mean, we're obviously just shooting the shit before we start recording and stuff, and we just wanted to include all that. So we start talking about what was fresh to us at the time, which is the first two episodes of season two of Westworld. <laughs> yeah. It might be hard for you guys to remember what it was like to be deep in the middle of season two of Westworld, <laughs> but this was fresh on our minds at the time. So t- cast yourself back <laughs> to the beginning of that season. To a time when you were going like, I think this show might be good. <laughs> They hang all of those, like, people who are at the park, and she's like, doesn't look like anything to me. I was like, fucking kill me. Exactly. (laughs) Do that, and I'm telling you. Whoever wrote this and was like, yeah, like, just, I never want to. (laughs) I don't want it. I don't. I, I don't want it. But this game. Now this has a story I can understand. There's an evil clown. Yep. He got magic. Yep. You know what? Infinity War is actually a lot like this game. There's too many characters. There's a clown? (laughs) There's too many people. There's like a bad guy who gets ultimate power. We're back. It's been far too long. Has been. I can't believe that we're playing this like once a week and the other one we just played without stopping until it was done. I know, it's such a different, I was thinking about that, like this is such a different gaming experience and gonna be such a different season. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's take stock of this situation. Listen to that music. We have a... uh, Oh, I'm so happy to be back. uh, And we have a (laughs) gloriously small party so we don't have to make any fucking decisions. Yep. (laughs) Let's sleep in a tent. 
So we're back in the game, and we dissolve the rust to get to that mountain path. Right, at the top floor of the Zozo door. The rust dissolved. Mm-hmm. That's got to be satisfying, right? Oh, CLR. Like, this door was all sealed with rust. <laughs> just like... Yeah, I forgot just how well-equipped we are right now. Yeah. Wait, what? What? <laughs> Where... So I'm at the top is of it a maybe building. maybe like, do you see how behind here, maybe that is a hill right behind us. We're walking into like a cave. From the top floor? We've been kind of referencing this, but this top floor goes into a mountain cave. Right. It's like if you walked into an apartment and they had busted a wall open and directly <laughs> behind that wall was a cave. Instead of like the alley. Or even, like, let's say that you built a building near a cliff. Right. And you busted the wall open and there was a cave in the cliff. It probably would still be, like, 20 feet away from you. Right. Like, it, the building usually is not, like, a part of the cliff. You can't go on the third floor of a building, break open a wall, and find caves. Not anywhere that I've been. You, you've never been here, man. That's you've true. Never that's, been true. that's true. That's true. You see on the right side of the building, there's, like, those rocks. Like, yeah, we're up against okay. the cliff. Oh, I mean... But still, like, the inside of this building is... <laughs> what? Oh, no, you kind of walk all the way to the end of the building, don't you? Like, yeah, you enter. out through that... Um, and now we're in... That door that they built into the back of the third floor of the building that goes directly into a cave. You know, I could imagine that this town is so fucked up that somebody just, like, dug a hole through the drywall and, like, built, like, a... Yeah, I guess so. A, an enormous elaborate cave system full of bridges. And I love also that, like, inside of this plateau, like, this is a little plateau we're looking at. Yeah. It's, like, hollow. I don't understand. The thing is like a honeycomb. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you don't have a shield. You do. I enjoy this game. Yeah, it's pretty great. That's a lot of little pyramid bugs. Yeah. Fired to meet you. <laughs> what the fuck? Silk flowers, beautifully made, too. We enter a room that has, like, a desk and a bunch of silk flowers and one single envelope on the desk. Mm -hmm. If you remember last episode, the woman who we used to send a bunch of things to, we found her, and she thinks that her boyfriend is alive, but we know that he's dead. Sending her silk flowers. And she's got a bunch of silk flowers. Huh. Wait a minute, weren't we selling, sending flowers and oh, they weren't arriving? This is like the origin point of those letters. Mm -hmm. Catfishing ground zero. <laughs> <laughs> Cyan was fucking sending that, the girl whose boyfriend is dead, she was, he was like sending her flowers right. and stuff from the dead boyfriend. Right. And we Here's were like, what the fuck are you doing, man? Dear Lola, I'm writing to beg for your forgiveness. I'm guilty of perpetuating a terrible lie. I have only now realized <laughs> the error of my ways. I hope I can correct a great wrong. Your boyfriend, who, thought, who you thought was in Mobley's, passed away some time ago. I have been writing in his stead. We humans tend to allow the past to destroy our lives. I implore you to not let this happen. Oh, man. It is time to look forward, to rediscover love, and embrace Fuck. the beauty of life. Fuck you, letter writer. <laughs> Fuck you. He's like, he's you like I'm so, doing you a favor. You have now so much I'm not lying to you anymore. <laughs> what the fuck? You have so much of life left to live. Man, this guy sucks. Written by Cyan. What a piece of shit. There's not even anything more to say. <laughs> I know. I mean, in that letter, he's like, we humans? The I way think, he I get excuses what, I, himself. I get what he's trying to do there, but it makes it sound like, you don't know what humans are. Let me tell you about how I am different because I am human and you are a monster. Well... It's like in this era of people having to make public apologies, I'm sure everyone knows what I'm talking about. This is like the worst kind where instead of just like <laughs> saying like, look, yeah. I was fucked up and I did this fucked up thing and I don't know what to say to you other than I'm not going to do it anymore. Right. He instead goes in and starts like philosophizing about like how all humans kind of are fucked up. Right. It's just <laughs> such bullshit. It's totally not a proper <laughs> apology for what he's done. I know. For a year. A year. Also here in Cyhan's room, there's like a locked chest. Mm -hmm. Oh, how do I unlock it? Uh, with the key. Where's the key? Probably with Cyhan. Ugh. What a, what a piece of shit. Yeah, seriously. What the fuck? Dude. Oh, here you are. The bird flies. That's a beautiful landscape. Yeah. Identical on both sides. You've had enough. 
So we step out of the cave onto like a plateau cliff that overlooks the beautiful image of the world. It's one of those outlooks where you're so high up that you're looking out and you have like a view of the mountains below you, you know? Right, right. And Cyan is standing there going like, humanity's interesting. Yeah, he's like reading himself poetry in his head or something about the fall of man. Right. The delightful is the light of the dawn and the the, the ecstasy of the sleep and, and, the, <laughs> so, and the humanity. But like he's just been hanging out up here for like a year with a lot of pigeons a making lot of pigeons. F- making arts and crafts where did he get all this silk from <laughs> There aren't, I, there aren't any spider I, monsters you know, up here. You know what's funny about that point? It means that he like really planned this out. Like he found a spot and he was like, this will be perfect. And he had to go somewhere and be like, I'm going to need enough silk for a year. <laughs> yeah. And then he just starts making silk flowers. He's also got to get a bunch of male pigeons too. It, the whole thing, it's like <laughs> to say that this was like a momentary lapse of judgment <laughs> would be completely inaccurate. But right now we finally found him and he's overlooking that view. The world before the fall, delightful is the light of dawn. Noble is the heart of man. Not your heart. Yeah, definitely not. Cyan! Hey, you're alive? Wait, what was his voice again? We didn't have one. We didn't one really have that. one for him, yeah, because he sucks. He doesn't deserve one. <laughs> I shall go with you. I shan't leave the world as it is. I, we don't want you, you psycho. What <laughs> are you thinking? But how did you find me? Wait, wait, tell me you didn't read my letters. Yeah, we know your dirty secret. The thing you were going to go to the grave with. (laughs) Dude. Cyan rushes back into his cave to, like, throw all the flowers under the bed. Yeah. They play this moment for comedy. Like, all of our characters are going, like, it's so funny what you did to that girl. And right. he's like, I'm so embarrassed. He's like, oh, my God, they can't see that I've done all of this. <laughs> oh, my God. Let me just quickly like, clean this up. It. Hide it. <laughs> hide, hide all the flowers. Hide the letter. Is this now all, like, in his pockets, yeah. like, bulging out of his clothes? He's like, oh, there's nothing to see in here. Oh my god, there's three more. I can't read them. Oh my god. <laughs> what the fuck? I we wonder just told if you we comment saw on this. how deeply sick this is or not. These, they're, um, merely a diversion of mine. These flowers are gorgeous. Cyan, these flowers, Celeste is like, well done. What is happening here? I don't know. Is he laughing now? Yeah, she's like face palming and he's laughing. I learned of that poor girl when I passed the Miranda. When I heard that she sent letter each day but never received any replies, something inside me snapped. And I decided to fuck with her? I decided to catfish her? Yeah. What the fuck? Dead, not pretending to be someone he's not. Yeah. Not just anybody, but her dead boy, like her fiance. As I wrote to that girl, I realized I was very much like her. I was looking behind, full of despair. My eyes were closed, and then something changed. Fuck off. I bumped into Sir Gow and Miranda. He He probably returned to the belt. Okay. And he said, Sir Gow? He calls everyone Sir. Oh, right. right. Yeah, that's his thing. Right. It's funny. Right. Thou, Uh Sir. He's overly formal. It's a very specific, yeah. Well, actually, I wonder if in the original translation, translation, there's like, it's like this guy speaks Speaks overly formally, and the only way to do it in English is like a way that you go, like, (laughs) what's wrong with this guy? (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) That chest that's in the corner of Cyan's like cave of unhappiness (laughs) is still locked. It's still locked? What is that? It looks like a save point. A key? Perhaps a key. Yes. Ooh. Oh, what is in it? Oh, man. That's going to be special. Mementos from all of his killings? Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Found the machinery manual and, and the, the book, book of secrets. secrets. Cyan, what is this stuff? This is diary. The book of secrets. <laughs> That's what I... Yeah, the front of his diary just says, like, book of secrets. <laughs> So in Cyan's chest are two confusing items that to us look very much like, oh man, more endgame secrets. Right. You know, like these are going to be the things that unlock the weird thing that gets us an item that we never use because right. the game is over. <laughs> you know, like, And we were excited about <laughs> exactly. that. Exactly. But right now we don't understand what it means or if it means anything. And I'm going to tell you right now, it doesn't. It's a, it's a joke. It meant something at yeah. one point. We'll eventually look it up and be like, oh, it's a joke. Is the machinery manual in our inventory? Oh. Yeah, no, these are it. Okay, simple book on machinery and book of secrets. Okay. I don't know where we're going to use it, but okay. You know what that animation just reminded me of? 
how long it took for sleep <laughs> to affect everything. Oh my god, what a nightmare. Yeah, man, these games have come a long way in a short time for us. Yes, they have. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird to think that at a certain point they're gonna start getting worse, too. I know. <laughs> like, well, we're gonna hit the, we're at the plateau, I feel like. We're, we've hit this peak. Yeah, we've climbed up to the top. <laughs> yeah. And then Seven is gonna be this interesting other th animal. So we go into a cave, and this cave works in a pretty frustrating manner. This is another one of the failings of the graphical interface. Mm -hmm. There's different plateaus of ground, and there's, like, stairs that go down between them, but then some of them still, like, connect to each other. Yeah. Like, almost like an Escher painting. The real problem is that it looks like two platforms that are connected or not. Right. And so I spent a long time walking around going like, how do I get up to that area that's right. obviously an area you can get up to? Because we're looking at it and there's like a spotlight with a save point underneath it right. that has like a way to a chest that we can't reach. I feel like they're trying to tell me something about these platforms and which ones you can right. walk on and which ones you can't. And after like a lot of walking around and getting into fights and being really frustrated and being like, where are we, sp how do we get there? I just like walk across the platform and I'm instantly there. What? what? Really? What the fuck? <laughs> how did that happen? I don't know. <laughs> what? I walked there. I did that. I did that thing. What? Oh, I feel yeah. I mean, I. <laughs> you know what this reminds me of? Like videos where there's a dog waiting to be let into a house that has an open door. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it's yeah. going like, "Come on, come on!" And then you go and you mime like you're opening the door, and the dog comes in. Right. Like yes. you could have walked in the entire time. <laughs> That's exactly That's what this what, was yeah. like. I was like that dog. <laughs> the barrier is in your mind, man. <laughs> like, there's got to be a way up. Wow. We're like, what's the secret? I know. <laughs> there is no secret. There's Because I was like, some of these you can walk across. It's not even a secret <laughs> at all. It's like what, the videos where you watch a puppy like try to figure out how to walk down a set of stairs. Okay, we have to comment on this phenomenon that keeps happening to us, and often we'll fix it later on in editing, mm -hmm. but one of the things that happens to us when editing this is that our brains fire the same way that it fired months ago, yeah. but we totally forgot that we were about to say the same exact point. I feel like, if anything, over the course of this project, I've been convinced that like free will is more of an illusion <laughs> than a real thing, because... like. <laughs> The same stimulus will result in the same joke. Like, I, I'll, yeah. I'll have forgotten I ever said this joke, and then I will, like, say a similar or exactly same joke, and then we'll press play, and the joke will come out of the original recording again. It happens to both of us yeah. all the time. <laughs> It's it's sometimes maddening, I'll say a joke and then it, you said it in the recording and like it's God it's so frustrating and then I get home at the end of the day and I'm like am I even a person <laughs> <laughs> am I just like a probability ball <laughs> and then I go to bed and then I come back and we edit more oh God <laughs> what the f did you just see that no. I stepped on this thing the oh, box what? opened and now this thing flew out of it and he's running around. Is it a dragon? Storm dragon. Seems like a dragon to me. In the box is the first of the eight dragons. You yep. pop open the box and he flies in circles around the room. And then you gotta run into him. And you got our first dragon fight. I gotta say, he's unimpressively little. Like He is like a little... He's room, like a bat. Yeah, he's kind of like a, a, a large bat. Well, I'm putting in a lot of damage. <whistles> Boom. <laughs> wow, this guy's Fuck. got a lot of health. Uh-oh. Oh, fuck. Oh, no. Well, now I'm in the worst situation, because now we're just going to cure people who are at full health. Yeah, well, you can... You, you're okay. These two people, at least, are not going to die, hopefully. Yeah, and I hope. Can... Oh, shit. What the fuck? <laughs> Doesn't seem to hurt him ever. He has the thunder shield on. Oh, that's why. That wind attack must be thunder somehow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's got to be, right? Yeah. Whoa. That looked different. Oh boy! That was different. Oh god. Oh shit. Oh fuck! <laughs> I got two people left alive. They each have about a hundred hit points. Yeah, the storm dragon is small, but he's very dangerous. Come on, Sensor! Come on, Sensor! Damn it! <laughs> yeah, so in this fight, when someone goes down, you can't bring them back. 
Because he auto-attacks anyone who's brought back. Yeah, before you can get any cures on him. And so the first of the eight dragons got us. This time. This time. We'll come back, because <laughs> we have infinite lives. Oh! I had to be close. I don't know. I had but, to be close. I mean... You want to give him a shot? He was... You could try again if you want. Oh, you do it. He was throwing... I mean, we think you had to be close, but it's like, again, like how... I mean, we've encountered a random enemy that can last forever. Like, easily twice the... Three, four times the length of that. The Intangier? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) That was a long one, that Intangier. What was the story behind the eight dragons? Like, they're hidden There was a guy who was like, there's eight dragons... That was the story. You're gonna fight him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this dude. Oh, shit. Fuck! It's okay, it's okay. Shit. Damn it! This is it. Oh, it's either this or, or it's over. Whoa! Yes! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Holy shit! Oh, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> wow! Edgar has 128 hit points. That's the only person who's alive. We got the uh, force armor. Wow. Oh. Seven, Seven dragons, dragons left. <laughs> wow! Dude! Yes. Oh, I'm so happy we got that. Dude, I can't believe that you got him on that last hit. <laughs> Just a box with a dragon in it. Whoever put that dragon in that box must have been like, <laughs> just like got the lid well, shut, put the lock on him, and like get back. He put it up on a shelf. <laughs> yeah. He put it like where you can't get to it, you can't reach it up there. But he also linked it to a button that if you stand on it like a trap, it releases the dragon. Man, fuck this move. Let's get this guy out of our party as soon as possible. I agree. The only person we're not replacing him with is fucking Cyan. I don't want to gamble with my strategies. <laughs> that's, not, that's not how I like to do this. He's a gambler! Setzer's slot machine move pays out in cat this time. Yeah, the cat runs out onto the screen and does something to the enemies. No damage. Zero damage. Does something. Totally worthless. This slot machine business is not a good weapon. Did it pee on them? I don't know. Is that a, a cat pee? Cat pees on them? And then we don't like to attack it because it stinks? I don't know what that was. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's just a power move where he, like, keeps eye contact while he has the cat pee on him. And he's like... Yeah, it's... <laughs> I'm going to look at you while I'm doing this. Just holding it. <laughs> they both look at you. Like, if you had a party member arrive, and you're like, what's your special move? And they're like, I play the, I scratch off the numbers on the scratcher <laughs> ticket. And you're like, and what happens then? And you're like, sometimes I win another scratcher. But you never know. You never know what could happen. Oh, you got some poison. Oh, Everyone is poisoned. I wasn't paying attention, and everyone's poisoned. Man, if they were going to change anything about these games, just get rid of poison. Yeah. Like... Or make it go away at the end of a fight. Well, it's, it's just, just hate, annoying. I hate doing this. <laughs> it's really annoying. You gotta pick up some more antidotes, too. We get back on the airship. Having not only gotten a new party member, but also taken down one of the eight dragons, mm-hmm. is like an extremely productive stop off in Zoso. Right. Oh, this is a different ship. Oh, shit. Explore. We haven't walked around here. And it turns out, like, inside the ship is totally different. It's the experimental post-apocalypse airship. It's almost like whoever owned this didn't want their own private blackjack table. <laughs> <laughs> There's no casino on this one. <laughs> a room with a chair. What is this room for? Who hangs in here? And what do they do all day? Obviously, we haven't found the party member that lives in there yet. We haven't gotten (laughs) back. Down in the engine room is an extremely guilty man. Oh, yeah. Cyan decides to exile himself. He just lives in the engine room from now on. (laughs) Looking at the gears, like, what does it all mean? (laughs) Big gear turns the little gear. (laughs) Or does it work the other way? I don't know. Either way. <laughs> like, we should probably take him right now and go make him tell that girl that he wrote those letters. Yeah. Let's take him with us, if not only because Setzer sucks a dick. Yeah, he does suck. I mean, this guy's gonna suck, too, because he doesn't know any spells. That's a good point. What are you gonna do? 
We'll make him better. Do we not have a store on this boat? No store. No, it's not that kind of airship. It's not <laughs> trying to get you back to the tables as fast as possible. Exactly. They don't have an ATM in the corner. <laughs> there are clocks. Yeah, they. You can tell. You can tell how long you've been in there. So where are we off to? I'm trying to find Miranda. To oh make yeah. Make him answer for his crimes against that woman. Do you want your? Um, no, I don't want it. It's your useless very now. <laughs> outdated. Your pre-apocalypse map. Just gonna do this the old childhood way and slowly learn about the where everything is. What was that thing? That like was that a know. tower in the middle we, of the mountains? We walked by this at one point and um, can we land in the middle of there? No, I guess we can. Let's see what this is. Encircled with mountains, there's a small open area with a big tower in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. When you enter the tower's area, like the floor, the gra the lob, not the lobby, the parking lot. Whatever, outside the building. Yeah, the plaza. The plaza. <laughs> you see a bunch of people walking around, and one of them we recognize as Strago. But hey, it's this guy. Yeah, and I think we both take this to be like, oh, this must be the cult of Kefka, because there's right. this like line of people who are all wearing the same robes, walking in a circle. There's also a couple of people who are standing around going, those are the cult of Kefka. They're That's so oh, Yeah, weird. you're right. <laughs> They just tell you. Right. One of those guys actually has a hint, but the hint costs 100,000 gold. Mm -hmm. For 100,000, I'll tell you about a secret treasure. Hand it over. Hooey! Right, here's the scoop. Beneath the desert of Figaro lies an ancient castle loaded with treasure. By the way, an old man who lives in weapon shop in Nerish is looking for you. Really? What is this leading to? No use talking to them. They've sold their hearts to Kefka. All they do is mope around. Oh, this is the cult of Kefka. Oh, dude. He joined them? Well, we gotta get him out the of there. The members of the cult of Kefka live in this tower. There's something wondrous atop it. You can only use magic attacks inside, so unless your magic's strong, you'll never make it to the top. What the fuck? Well, we gotta go talk to... We gotta go back to Narsh. Yeah, we do. I don't ever want to forget that $100,000 clue. We de I, we're, <laughs> Narsh is on the list. I'm not. I'm not gonna miss Narsh. But also, it was on the list even before. There's a castle under the Figaro Desert. Do they mean the castle of Figaro? Dude, they must. But they say it's filled with treasure. But this is just like a regular fight. No, it's not. We can't use anything but magic. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's a good thing you saved right up front. Yeah, I'm thinking it'd be best to just forfeit here. So we die on the tower. Yeah, this tower is like... A it's way out of not, our league. We're not ready for, yeah. yeah. But so we die, which means that we also got the $100,000 back from mm -hmm. the guy giving you that clue. Mm -hmm. And I walk in to be like, I should pay him that $100,000 for the clue again. Yeah, I know, and even though I'm feeling like I, you probably don't need to, there's video games that work like that, right? Like you, where if you don't talk to the person, the quest doesn't activate, which right? means that it doesn't exist in the world, right? I, which I don't think is the case <laughs> it's here. It's Definitely not. But I definitely had the thought of like, if I don't pay him the hundred thousand gold, then those other items won't even exist. Yeah, I can never I find was, them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna go give this guy a hundred thousand dollars. That can't be the Figaro Castle, right? Because that's, that's not what, ancient, right? Yeah, isn't it? It's not an ancient castle. It's a modern, amazing marvel of modern technology castle. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Out of our league or not, we try the Fanatic Tower again. Yeah, I think we were thinking, like, well, now that we know the deal, we can be ready. You know, right. like, we can start to formulate strategies. Which includes, like, casting Reflect on our own guys. Yeah, all of these enemies on this Magic Tower are playing all kinds of mind games with their magic. Like, right. they reflect you, they reflect themselves. Which, There's... for people who don't know, the way Reflect works, if any magic that's cast on somebody who has Reflect on them, it gets reflected on to... Yeah, it bounces back. Right. But... It can only bounce one time. Right. Well, if you have Reflect on you and the enemy has Reflect on him, mm -hmm. you cast it on you to affect him. Son of a bitch. They're all reflected right now. Yeah. Like, I don't know what to do. You have to reflect yourself and cast magic on yourself. Mmm. Do I? They, they're so fast. They just get to do things all day. Oh, great. Yeah, dude. Wow, that's a hard fight. You can give one of them the relic that gives them auto-reflect. Yeah, I'm so afraid that I'm just gonna get into a fight that fucks me. So this tower is basically 
stairs, right? I mean, right now, I think we're getting the idea, oh, it seems like this tower's pretty tall. We have no idea. We've gone up at least like eight flights of stairs, and then it loads a new area. And the whole rest of the tower is just more stairs. Oh my god. Oh boy. It's a tower. <laughs> Who would build something like this? I used to play a game called Sim Tower. And you, yeah, you built things like this. <laughs> I built things you like monster. this. <laughs> Only 200 flights of stairs to my office. Well, no, in Sim Tower, it's all about elevator management. <laughs> right. Yeah, luckily, I think the reflect tactic screws up how magic is supposed to work enough to. Right. Yeah, fuck you, buddy. Oh, yeah, it missed. Of course, it did. <laughs> did. Cast Doom on us, huh? Oh, shit. We just don't have the items to be doing this. Yeah. It's a sad state of affairs. <laughs> it really is. Yeah, we're halfway up the tower, if that. We're probably, like, maybe a quarter way up, and it's become apparent that, like... We're running out of magic, and we're running out of healing, and we don't have half of the items that we need. It just gets harder as you go up, and right. it's really obvious that it's going to continue getting harder. Well, like, you start off fighting these really hard guys that are called level 30, oh, and then that, you yes. start fighting guys who are called level 50, and guess what? They're way harder. Mm -hmm. But what you don't know is that the fucking tower goes all the way up to 100. Yep. I mean, the truth is, we haven't gotten to 99 heals yet. That's a good point. I hadn't thought about that, but you're right. You're right. We haven't reached 99. And we're going to need to do that before we can do this fucking tower. Mm -hmm. I can't run away. No. <laughs> Everybody's dead. <laughs> In one fucking hit? Yeah. Oh! Well, at least we, like, know what's in store for us yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Let's see if we can get some, some yeah, wall rings. Yeah, let's get out of here. Let's go to Narsh. Start gearing up for that tower. It's really just, like, we need an unreasonable number of potions. Oh, should I give this guy a hundred grand? Yeah, give the guy a hundred grand. So we're leaving empty-handed. Yeah. Strago's not coming with us. We're not getting anything from the tower. Uh -huh. and, but we have decided that we should just give this guy $100,000. We got to get rid clue. of... We got $100,000 burning a hole in our pockets. <laughs> for a clue we already know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. I think you can hand it over to him more than once. Oh, then you probably don't have to do it at all. The cult of Kefka. The Kef cult. Where the fuck is Narsh? Good question. Oh, wait. I was looking for Miranda, too. Yeah. But now I want to find Narsh and maybe the Figaro Desert. We'll find all of it. Look, I didn't spend $100,000 to not make back $100,000. You gotta spend money to make money, you know? Uh, not in this game. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> in all games. <laughs> oh yeah, Narsh is... Narsh. Yes. Narsh has monsters. Dangerous. So we head to Narsh to track down this guy in the weapon shop that wants to talk to us. Mm -hmm. It's going to become apparent once we're here that we won't be able to find him right now. Right. But luckily, every town we walk into is ripe with other secrets. Right. So we run into the pickpocket, the wolf thief, and he's talking about moogles again. <laughs> There's only one moogle still around, and a treasure hunter can pick that lock! Wow. The moogle. The one that you thought was going to be a thing, and maybe we missed it. We're going to find that moogle. So there's somebody here who wants to talk to us. In a weapon shop. These all look like shovel stores. I know. They all have shovels on the outside. Why would run some random person in the cult of Kafka know that somebody in Narsh was looking for us? The, well, all those people in the corner were like the thief sprites, mm. and they were saying things like, all these people in this cult are crazy, but there's a treasure on top of here. Mm. So I think they were just... They're sort of like Locke in that they're like mm. always just like, I when I hear about a treasure, I'm like, uh, I've got a... I'm a part of the like underground thieves mm. society of cutthroats and really <coughs> no good treasure hunters. And he scammed us out of a hundred thousand. Yeah, no joke. What a fuck. He was gonna do it again. He was totally ready to do it to us again. So we go back to Kupo Town. Kupo, don't scare me like that. There he is. Yo, dude. Yeah, I knew from the beginning of this game that Mog, the Moogle, was a playable party member. And that you could find him in this room. We've been to this room before mm -hmm. going, why can't we talk to anybody? Yeah. Can you talk? The thing is, is after we finished the game, I read up on this a little bit, and I think you can get Mog before the World of Ruin. Right. And it has something to do with the pickpocket. This isn't going to yeah. make sense to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, whatever. Does it make sense to you anyway? I'm not sure. You anyway, could the, get him uh, earlier, now you can get him now. 
now. Yeah, so I think we missed like a cutscene in the beginning of the game that right. features Mog, but I'm not going to count that as a point against us no, because me either. how many cutscenes do you need to see with Mog? A few. I could use more. I guess. Yeah, I like Mog. Human loving, fast talking, street smart, slam dancing Moogle. Slam dancing? Yeah, if I remember his special move is that he dances. Nice. Wait, what? That old psycho, Ramu, came to me in a dream and told me to be expecting you. <laughs> what? That psycho? <laughs> now I'm gonna join your party. Now, one of the things about the optional characters that are in this game is that their stories and their characters are the thinnest of the thin. Yeah, unlike the rest of them where every single character has like an extra backstory you can discover or these are like kind of missing a backstory. Quest. All of the yeah, all of these are like their backstory is the description that they give you right. at the beginning. Exactly. <laughs> so Ramu came to him in a dream. He has the most backstory of all the extra characters. That's true. He at least like talks to us and engages with us That's and true. You know, he was there at the very beginning. He say, he's like a part of the world, he's at least. The, yeah, yeah. But yeah, the psycho Ramu. Right. <laughs> the Moogle's like their age. Like, maybe he's this Moogle is super old, and he's like, when you've lived on the same planet for a long time, you get to know the other old beings, and Ramu is a psycho. He's like, a that crazy guy. Is, guy. He comes anyway, to you in your dreams. It like, tells you to expect people. that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like... Like, people who call instead of text, he's like, who does that? He's a psycho. S Whoa, say, we could use some Sasquatch muscle. Oh shit, Sasquatch. Besides, he'd be helpless here without me. He's somewhere in the mines. Once we find him, I'll order him to join us. Okay. Are we about to find Bigfoot? I think so. We're gonna finally find Bigfoot. I mean, we couldn't even find him. We were beating ourselves up over <laughs> it for so long. That's been my whole life. Just can't even find Bigfoot. And if we just found him finally, it'd be a lifelong dream come true. There have been a couple camping trips I've been on where I went sort of with the intention of like, eh, you know, maybe we'll see Bigfoot. You know, I'm not like looking hard, but like, I wasn't not looking for Bigfoot. <laughs> You're just keeping an eye out just in case. We never went this way, because when we were in the suits, we couldn't fit back here. Dude, why didn't we explore this fucking area? We forgot. I know, but whoa. Dragon! Yeah, up in the mountains of Narsh, which is where we had that decisive battle with Kefka way back. Mm -hmm. We're in the Pachinka machine part. There's a dragon hanging out in the machine. We're just stumbling over these things. Oh boy. Are you ready? No. I hope so. <laughs> Someone wearing the ice shield, I hope. Oh, I hope so. You'd best be frozen! <laughs> yes, dude. Yeah! Oh, oh my god! Good work. Yeah! Good fucking work. Six dragons left. Dude, this game fucking <laughs> rules. <laughs> this game rules. Six drags left. I found the Esper. At the top of the Pachinko machine is the Esper. Yeah, it's actually right where we left it, right? The, yeah, the, this is the original Frozen Esper from the beginning of the game. Oh, boy. It's a fight. <sighs> it's a fight. Mm-hmm. Nice. All right. Off-putting, but not overly difficult fight. You humans freed me from that prison of ice. You possess magicite. Who are you? How crazy is it that we get, like, a man out of time story here all of a sudden? Yeah, it's insane. The <laughs> Esper gets broken out of ice, and it's like, oh my god, what happened? It's been a thousand years. It's as though you found a dinosaur that could talk, <laughs> that had been somehow, like, frozen in time, <laughs> yeah. like some 90s kids movie. Encino Man, and but if it yeah, was a monster. And he comes out, and he's like, what happened? I sense war and destruction. Could that stupid war possibly have lasted a thousand years? Oh, he's like the War of the Magi. He's, he's like, he's he's like it's he's still going on? Way back yeah, then. yeah, you're like, this <laughs> shit's still going on? He's reasonably confused, because <laughs> the world is basically the same as fucked up as when he went in the ice. I could tell that you want to put a stop to the madness. <laughs> Let's see if you're worthy. Why you can you tell? Try Doc. Try Doc. Dry Doc. So at the top of the mountain, it gives you the option to jump. Yeah. One thing I love about these little side adventures is like you really have no idea what's going to happen. Yeah. So we jump off of the cliff and we land in some caves. I want to go back in the mines because there was still unexplored We got to find Sasquatch. Yeah. Where are we? 
So is this where I wanted to land? We land not far from a skull on a stick. Yeah. <laughs> which isn't some kind of like cool carnival food. Like a skull on a stick. Like it's like a, ooh, it's, it turns out it's all marshmallows, but it looks like a skull. It's a skull on a stick. No. No, it, this is just a skull on a stick. There's a head on a stick. What's wrong? What's with this carving? It looks like bone. It looks like a skull on a stick. <laughs> Something <laughs> in that eye. Magicite? Remove the magicite from the eye of the carving. Yeah. No. Why? Because I need to heal. Oh, good call. Good call. <laughs> <laughs> For once in my fucking life, I thought of it. We're getting good at this. We're getting good we're, at we're, these games. We're getting... We're gonna be really good by the time we play another one. <laughs> uh-huh. I was honestly like, why aren't you just grabbing that ominous eye out of the skull? I don't see what the problem is. <laughs> Alright. Take the eye. Whoa. What, um... Something's coming for you. Oh, oh! A Yeti! Oh! A Sasquatch! A Sk Sasquetti! Umaro! It's Umaro! The Sasquatch, and we get into a fight with him. He likes, to, he wants to tackle. He likes to wrestle. Whoa, okay. What, what? Power 100 times up. Defense up. So how do I, how do I, how do I change that for him? Wait, how do I switch to the next person? Why? Because he's about to be preserved. No, you hit Y. The oh. Y button. <laughs> I, I can't believe I... <laughs> There we go, we did it. I thought you were asking why we, I wanted to know. I hope we didn't just kill the Yeti. We just got ten gold points for that. And now he won't be our friend. Do we have to come back with Mog? Fuck. Oh, shit. Yeah, Mog is hanging out back on the airship, and so the Sasquatch will not join you. Yeah, I don't know why we didn't think of it, because he made such a point of being like, I will order him to come with you're us. You're right, you're right. God. Anyway, we leave the Sasquatch. Well, I can order from Chuck E. Cheese. What? <laughs> really? <laughs> Let's see what's on the menu. Man, what is that place like these days? Dude, I don't know. They got rid of the band, I think. Uh, yeah. No, we should not eat from Chuck E. Cheese. Of course we should dead. not. Dude, you never if, know. No. Eating Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> Cooler heads prevail. <laughs> well, now I think maybe we should. Yeah, you might be right about that. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that. Like, there is a part of me that's like, I maybe should know. That is a part of yourself that you should deny. But how disappointing is it listening to this that we didn't? I know, we really should have. <laughs> well, there's always next year. <laughs> Nutella pizza? No. <laughs> I mean, yes, but... No, I don't want this. Does this place have shop? I don't know. I don't know what that is. Free rest? Free rest. Free rest. Like rest is a guy who's in jail that we need to free. Free rest. <laughs> We gotta go get Mog and figure out this thing with Sasquatch. He's not a attacker. I don't know. He's a dancer, the... man. He's a slam dancer. Yeah, well, I'm gonna put the, uh, <laughs> the Zephyr cape on him. I mean, this game came out at, like, the height of slam dance. <laughs> you know? Uh -huh. They were like, we gotta reimagine the Moogle for, like, the new use. And they were like, he break dances. So being at this point, I feel like the more powerful we can make him, mm -hmm. the just, like, yeah. Oh, right, this is where the Esper was. There's nothing in here now. Okay. If Mog is not on the original terrain for the chosen dance, there's a 50% chance Mog will stumble on his first attempt at battle. Whoa, okay. I think once he starts dancing too, he'll just like keep dancing for the rest of the fight. Right, but it's like, I need to know what background he needs to be fighting on. Yeah. <laughs> what? He learns new dances by fighting in different areas. We never figured out the point of this. No, it's some kind of like thing where it lets Mog have more abilities and we just kind of do it once in a while and mostly go like, whatever. Okay, so now he danced and now we're on this background. It's the kind of thing that I feel like must be extremely powerful, but I just couldn't be bothered to figure it out. I'm sorry. The background changed. For what? Like, why? Because it's the dance associated but with But who cares? I mean, like, what Like, what does that do? It also did a move. He did- he cast, like, a thing and it hurt the guy okay, or whatever. Okay. Extra character with weird abilities. Throwing hubcaps at us. <laughs> That's like a part of their body that they ripped off and threw at you. That's like if I ripped off one of my fingers and threw it at you. Yeah, but maybe their hubcaps grow back, you know? Maybe my finger does. 
It probably wouldn't. Your but. finger probably doesn't grow back. <laughs> Never know until you try. So at some point in this process, Ryan got a random phone call and it went to voicemail. And it was a great, great voicemail where a guy was telling him... What was it? He was going to sell you a bunch er, of toilets? Earlier in the day, it was almost like I got a call back as though he thought he was calling back about someone calling about an ad he put in Craigslist or something. He had like the wrong number, obviously. So this guy had like a toilet for sale. Right. (laughs) And he called me and left a message saying, he's like, hey, I got your call. I still have that toilet for sale. Right. If you want, I've got others too. I've got others. Um, Give me a call back. I wish I had called that toilet guy back. And when he was like, I already sold it. And I'm like, no. Yeah, like, I need... Well, because he said that he's got more coming in. Yeah, that's true, but I really want Which was that. really the part of it that I was most curious about. All day, I was just, like, playing with the idea of, like, I want to call him back. <laughs> I don't know what to say, but I want to know what the deal is. I could play dumb and say I'm interested. I just want to know if he's, like, a toilet retailer or if this is, like, a side hustle for him where he just happens to have a lot of toilets that he's selling. There's a lot of reasonable questions for this I guy. I don't know. I was curious, but I never found out. Who's this guy who's, like, maybe getting more toilets in? You know, like a a plumber or a junkyard or any number of... It's got to be a junkyard. Guy who I wouldn't sells put my ass on a seat that I bought from a junkyard. Well, you could get a new seat, I guess. I don't know. I mean, the here, I mean... I guess you use it to shit in. <laughs> you sit on public toilets, right? Yeah, yeah. No, it's... None of it is really... You want to do a save there? Yeah, I guess. No, and public toilets are not actually, like... The, there's nothing really unsanitary about it. Nothing, Jeff? Um, I, well, I don't know about nothing. I think unsanitary <laughs> was not the right word. The legend of catching a disease from a toilet seat was... Look, there was a Mythbusters episode. Jeff, let me tell you about a bathroom I was in recently, okay? okay? Oh. <laughs> I was in a bathroom that was so awful that I became, like, obsessed with how bad it was. <laughs> I was so obsessed with it that I actually recorded a long monologue of this is true. myself as Werner Herzog. You, like, texted me about it. Well, actually, what happened was you were at the nightclub and you texted me about it. And I was like, what does Werner Herzog have to say about this? And then you recorded yourself. Yeah. I had to like sneak away to like a corner. It was so crowded. I like felt so self-conscious. I was like, I can't just like mumble angrily into my microphone in a German accent in public for like 10 minutes. But he did. And here it is for your pleasure. (laughs) The bathroom was clearly modeled to be a single person restroom with a stall against one wall, but they had installed across from it two urinals. And as I entered the restroom, I found myself in a situation where there was one older man, perhaps slightly younger than me, sitting on the toilet, having a hard time relieving himself. With the sound of the dance music and the sloshing of my shoes in the water, I approached the open urinal. Next to me stood a man with slick back black hair that had been ruined by his sweat in the nightclub. And as I looked at the urinal, I saw the problem of the water on the floor. The urinal was overflowing with every piss taken into it. This is not something I normally admit to, but I have a shy bladder. I looked beside me, and I saw a man who also could not. We locked eyes for a moment, and both of us understood. From behind me, I heard the groans of a man trying to pass his bowels but the muscles were not responding and from the hallway I could hear people grumbling what's taking so long I need to poop I need to pee as the old man groaned out almost in pain I shouted behind me don't worry everyone we're going to get through this nobody laughed the tension if anything was heightened but at that moment my bladder released and i sprayed forth into the overflowing urinal and it spilled onto my shoes a moment i otherwise would be ashamed to report but at the time 
It was the greatest relief of my entire life. I am happy to report that Luke Vibert is nearly as good as he was in the 90s. Anyway, that that's not... We don't need to talk about this. Depends on the toilet. I mean... It depends on the toilet. You can't catch something from a toilet seat. Not usually. It's gotta be a really... It's gotta be a toilet seat that you know you would catch something from. It's got to be a toilet seat you know you could catch something from. Is that what you just said? Yeah, like like a toilet seat that's like made out of used needles. Something that you know, I don't know. Yeah, I, guess, I mean, you would, I guess you would know that. Let's get off of this topic. Okay. Fighting so many dudes. I mean, we're not getting like a ton of money or experience from these fights. But we are learning uh, we are level learning three magic. magic. Yeah. Because after I get Sasquatch, mm-hmm. what's like... Well, we gotta find the treasures that we paid a hundred thousand dollars for. So we make it back to Sasquatch with Mog, and Mog starts telling him what to do, as he said he would. Mog says, "I'm your boss, Koopo. You're gonna join us, Koopo." <laughs> well, that is, I'm glad that we brought him along. Yeah, admirer of bone carvings, <laughs> strongest Gagas, the Sasquatch pal with muscle. His character trait is that he admires bone carvings. Umaro. Sweet. Oh, me, Umaro? Oh, yes, boss. Oh, me, Umaro. <laughs> yeah, yes, boss. Me join you. Oh, me wait for you. <laughs> Big air shit. <laughs> he bounced that squad. And he's gonna wait for us in our in our plane. He's gotta be more useful than this this Moogle. I thought you wanted to bring Moogle with us to the final battle. I don't like him already. <laughs> you mean his dance doesn't do it for you? I don't want to have to remember what background goes with each dance. <laughs> Why would you? <laughs> yeah, like, what? <laughs> Who cares? Not me. That's one I'm okay with missing. I'm more bummed that we missed Odin in the last game than, than this. Yeah. Where is Locke? We don't know. Hmm. So... Hunting for a treasure somewhere. There's a treasure that's under the desert of Figaro. Yeah. There's an old man in Narsh that we'll talk to when we get Locke. There's six more dragons. We know the magic tower. I think there's just straight up places we haven't been. Right. We know to get Gal on the Velt. Oh, shit. An aged man this says... This is Gal's dad. Oh, hello again. Yep. You were the tops. Quick, fix that chair. Then you can use it to reach the roof. Gao's dad is as crazy as ever. How is this guy alive? I don't know. Like, nobody's taking care of him, and he's, like, completely (laughs) senile. He clearly cannot live on his own. I mean, do the responsible thing and put him in a home. (laughs) Oh, God. You don't suppose, can this be Gao's father? Yeah, say, is everything fixed yet? Fix what chair? His tea hurts me. He just says crazy things. This is the Velt. This is Velt music. Okay, should I just walk around here for a minute? Yeah, walk in the cave, too. I want to see what's in there. Cave in the belt. Oh. Oh, doggy. You coming with us? What does that mean? I don't know. This game is so ripe with stuff going on at this point in it. Like, every place you stumble into, there's a part that you know is, like, a part of the bigger clock or whatever. Yeah, it's like a whole thing. Because we were going to walk around in the veldt and pick up Gao the way we did in the beginning. Mm -hmm. You know, using dried meat to lure a child. (laughs) As you do. As you do. In the veldt. In the veldt. (laughs) We walk into the cave in the veldt and Shadow's dog. Mm Mm-hmm greets us at the front and I guess we're following him or something but he's a part of us and we're gonna go we're gonna go find Shadow we're gonna go find right? Shadow presumably yeah presumably he's in this cave there's also more clue thieves hanging out in this cave yeah, handing out clues. handing out clues for the rest of the treasures <laughs> they're not stealing the board game clue they have clues <laughs> in a forest north of the veld dwells a frightful dragon I'm going to come out right now as future us and say, fuck this guy. Yeah, I hate this guy. And this guy is a clue. liar. And he is, at the very least, ignorant. Well, it's just misleading and disappoint. It's I hate him. He tells us about a dragon that lives in the forest. And there how is. happy he would be. I'm going to tell you right it. now, there is no dragon in that forest. There is like an unusual dinosaur, but there is no fucking dragon. I did notice that forest and I was like, there's something there. I suppose there. no human could ever defeat it, but oh, how free we would be if someone could. <laughs> well, we're going to eventually look for that dragon in that forest for like most of the rest of this game. <laughs> You're right, aren't you? 
how are we going to convince Tara that like those kids are going to die if she doesn't help us anyway? Because I don't know how she doesn't realize that. Like, she's doing them no favors if the world ends. Although I guess the world already ended. Yeah. So is it going to end again? Like, or are they just trying to take it back? Well, they are the Returners. Oh, yeah. So maybe they want to return it to the world of balance. But they were the Returners before it was out of balance. Whatever. Either way, we find Shadow at the edge of this cave. Shadow and your dog. Look at those wounds. Care to. Oh, it's this fuck. Oh, man. Oh, shit, he jumped on us. Sir Behemoth? Huh, oh, okay. Man, he looks scary. <laughs> It's probably Senior Behemoth, right? Yeah, I think so. Not Sir Behemoth? Yeah, but Sir Behemoth jumps out and attacks us when we try to help Shadow. <laughs> Kicked his ass. What, what, enemies coming from behind? What? He's, this is, it's not over. Another oh, monster boy. appeared. <laughs> Another one. Another one of the same guy. But he's red. Yeah, and he's looking the other way. So now he ran away. I got the Behemoth suit and the Thunder Blade. We can't do anything for her here. Her? Is Wait Shadow a minute. A, Shadow's is a Shadow she? a girl? Fuck. She comes like, the, goes like the wind? Is Shadow a girl? Are there two shadows? Who is this mysterious Max Strange? Uh, no. Look, no. There's a, this is a typo that winds up throwing us off for so goddamn long. No, because Shadow's story, as you'll see, unfolds in like one of the vaguest ways. It's very vague. It's <laughs> so vague this and confusing. Typo makes all of that read in a very confusing, confusing way. So we do think like there is the potential that this is not the same Shadow or something. It's referred to as her. And it happens twice. Wait a minute. Wait, They've re referred to him as he before. Re definitely, right? Yes. They had to have. D w really? Wait, where the have they? Yeah, because it's like when we first saw him, they'd be like, that guy over there looks shit scary. Yeah, but maybe he's secretly a woman and like this is... There's going to be that revealed, but this also accidentally pre-revealed it? Let's take they her again. back. What? Like, yeah, it's not yeah. a typo. To Thamasa using the airship. Wait, we're gonna leave here? Isn't there more? Okay, well. Okay, <laughs> this is just happening now. One of the things that this part of the game does a bunch is you finish the thing that's happening in a dungeon and then it just like kicks you out and sends you to a place far off in a distant land because the truth is you're done there. <laughs> yeah. But I'm sure I was like, wait, I wanted to see if there was another chest in there. And Yeah, I mean, it's not a bad instinct, but in this game, it's not the case almost ever. So a couple of times we like go back for nothing. I think there was more in that cave that I don't want to go back and walk all the way through. You were having a nightmare. And that's episode 19. It sure is, Jeff. We've got Shadow back for a minute. We sure do. We're going to learn about Shadow's backstory next episode. We sure will. <laughs> yeah, it was a big episode. We got Mog and mm -hmm. Umaro. Yeah, next time we're going to learn more about Shadow. Yeah. By like just like ripping the pieces out of him. It's going to be a long haul to get this guy to fucking give up the goat on his goddamn story. Yeah. But anyway... That's all next week. Yeah, I feel like we've finally gotten comfortably into the loops of the end game. You know, like we've finally settled into the pattern of knowing what we can complete and where we should go. We have like a few options, you know. Mm -hmm. It's a good place to be, it's Jeff. A, it's a great, <laughs> it's a great place. Like, yeah, it, I was like excited again when we were editing these episodes because just like the sounds of the post-apocalypse and just like the feeling of being like, ah, What's out there? Yeah, and also like trying to plan the episodes when we're looking at it. We're like, oh yeah, this one's about this. And then we're watching, we're like, oh and it's also about this. Like we walked into <laughs> this place and that, and man, like just like Yeah, we fought the try talk in this episode. Yeah. Like, geez, there's so much it's, that happened. Yeah. Oh, let's do the billboard segment. Oh yeah, this week uh, we're going to the, the, the cave where Cyan was hiding out. The cave of sadness, <laughs> yeah. as I like to call it. <laughs> well, let's go see. Maybe it has some natural beauty to it or something. No natural beauty that I can tell. I mean, oh. it's a cave. Man, this this really brings the the phrase man cave to a whole new place. Well, I mean, not this a lot a of man, man caves pit. have silk flowers, but yeah, this is a man pit. You're There's right. Silk flowers, but they're all filthy. They're sticky. Oh man, you would not want to shine a black light around this place. That no. bed is like brown, just from like you can see where he would lay. Oh. Looks like he was a side sleeper. Oh boy. Oh man, you can. Oh god. <laughs> Feel oh. this where his hair was. No, oh, I don't can, want to feel you, that. Oh, it's, cu it's coming off on my fingers. Oh, 
God. Let's just find the billboard and read it. Oh, it's out here on the on the. It's not the veranda. Patio, the yeah. Veranda. Wow, this is gorgeous. This is a beautiful view. I, I can't believe say. Cyan came here and what he did with it was turn it into a jackoff pad. I, yeah, I can't believe that either. But that's God. what he's done. Obviously, it's just like ruining beauty that was already natural. Like, how do you ruin nature like this? I've seen bulldozers level places, but I, this is like. If I just went into a national park and jacked off on a monument. There's something really wrong with this guy. All right, so the billboard reads, For advertisements, email nocappodcast at gmail.com. Well, fuck. You know, I, our advertiser should really be able to at least tell us if an ad is sold or not. Right? You know, when this season is done, they're done. I totally agree. Let's just get back <laughs> to the fucking studio. So if you're interested in a billboard, they're $50 a piece, and you can say whatever the hell you want. Wherever you want it. Just email nocappodcast at gmail.com with the subject line billboards. Please rate and review us on iTunes or Apple Podcasts. You can find us at No Cat Podcast on Facebook and Twitter. That's N-O-C-K-A-T. I think that's it. We have t-shirts for sale. Go to the website. It's mm-hmm. no one can know about this.com. And with that, here's a little no one can know about this dessert. So much to drive Wait, a luggage around. That's a thing. Have you not seen that's a thing that you can get? I swear to God, they have these amazing like tech future videos oh, of like businessmen that, that you, you? <laughs> no well there's the luggage that follows you no this is even better than that this is the luggage that you sit on and ride around like a scooter turn right on Bannowitz street